Dan with Guardian Mold Prevent here. I want to take a look with you at a home that's located in Palos, Illinois. Uh, we're down in the basement area, and as you'll be able to see as we pan around this basement, a significant amount of mold has developed on the drywall, the trim, the insulation, and basically all of the building materials in this basement. What happened was the sump pump failed, uh, and water was backing up into the basement. About five to six inches actually got in, and because uh, drywall acts like a sponge and essentially wicks the water right up the wall, um, the drywall uh, was wet for quite some time. You can see the doors are moldy um, and the basement retained a lot of the water and mold developed. Now we realize that when we're showing you these videos, especially of black mold in basements, um, that your basement probably will not get to this extreme because you'll catch the water in time and you'll get it pumped out. But we want you to be able to see what kind of damage just a few inches of water can cause in the basement if left unchecked. We get calls from people all the time who are on vacation, they come back and their stuff's been floating in water for, for a while. And this is the kind of scenario uh, that, that it causes. Now when we, when we look at uh, mold remediation and taking care of the mold issue, we break things down into three different types of materials. You have porous materials, so your drywall, trim, insulation, press board, uh, and uh, paneling, and then you've got semi-porous materials. This would be your uh, framing members of your basement, the studs. Then there's non-porous, so the concrete floors, the concrete walls. And when we look at uh, these three different types of material, we classify them because we actually handle each type of material differently when we go about uh, performing the mold remediation process. Now, the first thing we would normally do in a basement like this is we set up containment. So we put up poly sheeting, block the basement off from the rest of the home to try to contain the uh, the poor air quality. We then put in air scrubbers or negative air machines, some uh, people call uh, call them, and we run all of the air through HEPA filtration. The next step is then to remove all the and discard all the porous materials. So your drywall, trim, insulation that got moldy is removed, and then we treat all of the stud framing and the concrete with a biocide and then a mold resistant coating. We then leave the air machines running for uh, a period dependent upon how much mold is located in the basement. Now this is an after picture and again just to, to summarize you can see that all the drywall uh, that was affected in this in this particular area was cut up from the ground in this basement that we're looking at now uh, that was just on the very lower portions of the walls so we removed the, the affected drywall, the trim, the insulation from the ground up four foot. We then scrub down all of the framing and the foundation walls with a biocide. We then uh, treated them with an acrylic-based mold-resistant coating. We left our air machines running, uh, and when we pull out of this project, all of the surfaces are clean, clean and free from mold, and the air is at an acceptable level.